Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our Lunch and Learn. My name is Roger Morgan. I'm the founder and CEO of Pawtree. And today, as always, at Lunch and Learn, we've got with us Brooke Sloat, Director of Product Development. Hello, Brooke. Hello, Roger. Hi, everybody. Hope you're having a great Friday. These Lunch and Learns we've done, Brooke, I gotta just thank you on behalf of everybody. I know you get a lot of shout outs at the end of each of these with a lot of uh, gratitude and thanks for doing these. And I know for certainly just for myself, who I already feel like I'm a pretty knowledgeable pet parent. I know that these lunch and learns have helped me. There's, um, and I know they're, they're helping people, you know, pet parents across the country, um, both pottery customers and non pottery customers to learn more about how we can be empowered as pet parents to, um, to really, um, you know, help our pets and, and not just to survive, but to thrive. And that's what these lunch and learns are all about. And today's topic is no different. So we've got a wonderful one today. Um, I'm excited to hear what you have to say about this one, Brooke. Uh, the topic <laughs> is do away with a doggy breath for good. And I know there are a bunch of uh, pet parents out there who are thinking to themselves, if I could do away with doggy breath, that would be like um, finding a gold mine. You know, just uh, just a, 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 a wonder. I'd be like winning the lottery just that day where you're like, what? I could be living, you know, my life in a different way um, tomorrow than I did today. And this is one of those topics because we all met most of us with pets deal with it. And we don't have to is what I think you're going to tell us based on some some wonderful information. So um, shall we dive in? And um, I guess the question that. Uh, you know, that I would ask, why is this such a hot topic among pet parents? Okay, so we're gonna just dive right in. So first of all, let's just be clear what we're talking about here. The phrase doggy breath is not a term of endearment, you guys. It just means that your dog's breath stinks, <laughs> okay? Right, right. So if, if someone were ever say to say to you that you have doggy breath. Oh, heaven forbid, it, right? Yeah, exactly. Take that piece of gum or mint that they're offering. So um, the reason that this is a hot topic, number one, is because it's noticed a lot because your dogs are constantly kissing you and in your face and things like that. Right. So so that's why it's noticed. The reason it's such a hot topic is because good oral hygiene is very, very important for both us and for our pets and for our pets, um, really important to their overall health. Unfortunately, though, most dogs have oral disease by the age of three. And what that means, like if they have poor oral health, that results in painful mouth conditions, difficulty eating. Um, to give you an example, I get calls many times from people saying that their pet isn't eating or, you know, that that's one of the things that's going on. And, and I always ask how old the pet is. Um, when did they have their last dental? Because difficulty eating could just be, it hurts them to eat. So you might need to soften the food or basically take the dog to the vet, okay? But um, I digress a little bit. So the so poor oral health also results in bad breath, which we're now affectionately terming doggy breath, um, gum disease, and costly dental procedures. And a recent study showed that two thirds of pet owners don't provide the basic dental care that their veterinarians are recommending. Um, you know, we brush our teeth every day and it really is important for you to do the same for your dogs, but this is rarely done because it's very challenging to do. If you've ever tried it, it's not that easy to do. And that's why many pet parents have experienced this doggy breath because it's very challenging. And if you can't brush their teeth, what do you do? That's right. You know, and I, I totally get that because it is extremely difficult to brush a dog's or a cat's teeth. Um, you know, very few of our animals will let us just kind of dig around there on their teeth and open their mouth. And I have a hard time getting a sock out of Jojo's mouth, let alone like getting her mouth open to, you know, pried open to, to brush her teeth. So, um, so, I, so that makes sense that, that we've all experienced it. So what can pet parents do about this breath situation? I love the breath situation. The breath. Um, okay, so they can take, you know, pet parents can take your dogs to um, to the vet for annuals, okay, annual dentals. These can be costly, but it's really the only way to really know what's going on in your pet's mouth. A visual exam by you or your vet can only tell so much. The x-rays that the vet takes, those are key to finding out if there's a real problem. 
Unfortunately, though, the only way to do the x-rays is to put your, your pet under anesthesia, which many of us don't like to do because of the risks. But I will tell you from personal experience, um, I have Shih Tzus, their mouths are crowded. They do get dentals every single year because that's my vet's thing, okay? Dentals are something that are very important to him. And he's uh, one of the first vets that, that I've met that kind of makes it a requirement to do it every year. But I remember one time that had he not done the x-rays, that he would not have discovered an abscess in one of my dog's mouths and she was having difficulty eating. So just to give you some personal experience. Okay, so there's there's the, the dentals and there are lots of dental products in the market today. Some are better than others. Um, so there are rawhide chews that are coated with enzymes that your pet can chew on. Um, but a lot of pet parents don't wanna give uh, rawhide. Rawhide gets slimy and gets to be a potential choke hazard because they get it really, really soft and then they try and, and ingest it. Exactly. And sometimes that enzymatic stuff has an odor all of its own, you guys, it's not very good. So I, I rather have the doggy breath in that personally, but uh, that's just my personal opinion. Um, there are oral rinse solutions that you can spray in your pet's mouth, but often these contain chemicals that you don't want your pet ingesting and, and especially ingesting daily, right? And there are also hard dental chews in the market, <clears throat> but many of those contain uh, gluten and gluten will essentially stick to your dog's teeth. So they're chewing on them for a long time, but they're more of what we call an occupier. They really don't do much cleaning for, you know, on their teeth. So um, we developed because of all of this and we know how hard it is for pet parents to brush their pet's teeth. Um, we developed a solution for this and, and it's our, uh, our paw treat dental sticks. Okay. Okay. So we've got a solution. I mean, I, I do appreciate how I do think it's wonderful how on these lunch, lunch and learns you do, you provide with this, you know, there are times to see the vet. There are times there are, you know, a lot of products on the market uh, to address various pet health issues. And I think it's important for us to, to be empowered and understand, you know, what those options are. You mentioned the pottery dental sticks. Obviously, we're partial to those as we develop them. Can you help us understand a little bit how these dental sticks are different from some of the other options that are out there on the market? And how do these dental sticks work? Well, these are really... Um these are really fun. So our dental sticks help to control plaque and, and breaks down tartar on your dog's teeth. And a lot of a lot of places um, claim that, but this really happens with ours. And it does this just through the mechanical action of chewing the treat because they 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 crunch on it. Okay, um, these are unlike other hard dental chews because ours are easy to chew and they're fully digestible. So if they swallow or eat them, you know, whatever they they that's what we want them to do. Yeah. But, they do work in a unique way. Um, and the best way to think of this, I, I just, you know, I'm very visual, so I want you guys to picture eating an Oreo cookie. Oh, I like when, Oreos. Yeah, I know, yeah. Are you, are you, are you talking I'm, about I'm, eating a double stuffed Oreo cookie? Because that's what my, that's my favorite. It, it could be any stuff. Yeah, okay, right, any stuff. I will, I will tell you now, I am not telling you, you guys, to feed your pets Oreos. I'm gonna, I'm just trying to give you a visual. So when you eat an Oreo cookie, that stuff gets all over your teeth, right? It's kind of gross, <laughs> but that's exactly what happens with our dental sticks. It literally has an Oreo effect in your, in your dog's mouth. And that means that they take a few bites of the, of the chew and they, of the stick and they chomp, 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 which is what we want them to do. And while they're doing that, it coats their teeth with the active ingredients. Similar to an Oreo, but with Oreos, you're putting sugar and carbs all over your teeth. So not the best thing. Oh, yeah, I like them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, Raja, you need to eat before these lunch and learns. Okay. Uh, I know. I'm getting hungry. Just thinking about devil stuff Oreos. Okay. Sorry. I digress. We, we, we want this stuff to get all, all over their teeth. And um, because we have spearmint and parsley in them, and that will have an immediate effect in getting rid of or getting into all the nooks and crannies in their mouth and helping to neutralize and freshen their bad breath. But the most important ingredient is the seaweed that we use um, in our dental sticks. And this special seaweed breaks down the biofilm on their teeth. And there's layer upon layer upon layer of biofilm, um, which is what tartar is made of. So our dental sticks 
coat your dog's teeth with the ingredients that break down the biofilm or the tartar. And this helps to de decrease the viscosity of the biofilm on their teeth. So it's basically like you're brushing. But our dental sticks work differently than hard dental chews because ours work in a uh, work at the very um, top and bottom of the teeth at the gum line where the tartar really is. It doesn't work where they're actually just chewing them, you know, like like the ones that have gluten. I'm not gonna name any, but I'm sure you guys all know what I'm talking about. That doesn't send anything up to the top of the teeth, doesn't coat anything. You want it at the gum line, which is where all this tartar basically is, okay? Mm -hmm. And the form that we use in it, this treat form, because your, your dogs are gonna love these, right? Um, it's really just the mode of application. It's an easy way to get the active ingredients in their mouths because they, they love the taste of them, they're gonna wanna chew, and it's much easier than trying to brush their teeth. That makes sense. Um, like I said, I, I've, I, uh, I have a hard time getting my dogs to open their mouth with my hands around them anyway. Um, <laughs> They, they don't mind if they want to give kisses or lick, you know, my face. But but when when it comes time for me to, you know, try to touch or get in there and maneuver inside their mouth, they, they uh, it's amazing how tight that grip can be. They'll just clamp down. And it's like, you know, you're not getting in. You know, this is Fort Knox. Um, so that's wonderful. That, um, so, okay, so that helps understand, um, you know, kind of some of the mechanics of how our dental sticks work. Anything else on our dental sticks before I go into the, the, the next question? Um, yeah, I, I would also say that um, if you use our the Pottery Dental Sticks and you use that coupled with a low carb diet, that's going to help your dog maintain good oral hygiene. Um, remember, most domesticated dogs are fed high carb diets filled with grains that can't break down in your dog's mouth because they lack the enzyme amylase, which we have in our mouths. So when we start eating, yeah. The amylase starts working in the mouth, breaking down, you know, breaking down stuff, you know, before it even hits your stomach. They don't have the amylase. OK, um, so the heart, heart, the high carb diets result in tartar buildup in the mouth. And this is where our dental sticks can really make a significant difference. OK, that's helpful. Now, when you were talking about the, the, the chewing, the mechanical, I think, a mechanical action in the mouth by chewing the, the, the treat uh, or, you know, in, in our case, the dental stick. Um, is this, I have a question for you because I, I feel like this may be a, a fallacy that, that I've heard, but but what you just said triggered a, a, a thought from the past. Is it true that if a dog eats something crunchy, that that's enough to basically clean their teeth? You know, that mechanical action is happening. If they eat something crunchy, it's going to kind of help clean their teeth. Is that true or not true? That That's definitely not true and I'll explain why, but I think where you're getting that from is, um, Many, many, many years ago, there was a particular company that basically uh, advertised and said, hey, look, feed your dog anything and then give them this treat afterwards and they'll crunch on it and boom, it'll clean their teeth. OK, guys, that's like me telling you to go ahead and eat pretzels um, and that's enough to to clean your teeth. So don't brush your teeth, just eat pretzels and that crunch is going to clean your teeth. That's just think of it that way, okay, and how ridiculous that sounds. Right. I think you understand um, why eating high carbs is not going to clean your teeth and it's not going to clean your dog's teeth either. So no, they must, uh, you must do something else to help them clean their teeth. Yeah. Um, and yeah. remember when I said that the poor oral health may result in, in a painful mouth conditions and difficulty eating, um, as I mentioned before, this could be, and I, it's important that you guys remember this, this could be a reason why your dog stops eating his kibble all of a sudden. You might think they don't like the kibble anymore, but it just may be too painful for them to eat. Remember, our pets are very stoic and they really don't often show pain. Um, one way you can test that without you know, too much bother is um, take your kibble, rehydrate it with water. So pour water over it and, and let it stand for a little while, put it in the fridge or something and let it soak and get soft, almost like mushy. Mm -hmm. And then see if they'll eat that because now you've softened their kibble. It's still as nutritious, but you can just see if it's easier for them to eat. That's just an idea. A great tip. That's a terrific tip. I mean, I, I, periodically I've noticed you know, uh, one of my dogs in particular, and it, it, I wondered if it's anxiety. It sounds like it could also be a, maybe some pain in the mouth, but periodically she'll stop eating for a day or two. And that's another thing for me to be aware of. Um, that's excellent. 
So, so as we kind of think about wrapping up this, this thought, you know, um, dental health is a, a big issue that, that almost all of us as pet parents face with one or more of our pets. Um, and you've, you've talked about, you know, some of the different products on the market without necessarily referring to a specific product, but you've talked about our dental sticks and why we believe so strongly that they're, that they're so effective. Um, could you just, um, you know, it's a lot of information for people to process. Could you just summarize for us what's kind of the main, you know, takeaway about dental health and in particular our, um, you know, our dental, uh, you know, sticks and how they're going to help a pet thrive and not just survive? Okay. So um, our dental sticks work on three different levels. First, they yeah. support good, healthy, vibrant teeth by the mechanical action of breaking off the tartar in your dog's mouth as your dog chews. OK, so the mechanical action um, breaks down and breaks off the tartar. Secondly, the ingredients help to decrease the viscosity of that biofilm on their teeth. Right. Um, and that's why I talked about the seaweed. OK. And then the addition of parsley and spearmint help to freshen and neutralize their breath. So mm -hmm. it's you're getting them three different ways as, as we kind of like to do at Paw Tree. More, more than one way works better. I, I, I love it. I always think of it as this multimodal. I've heard several of our veterinarians on our advisory council talk about that and this multimodal approach. It's one of the things with Paw Tree I can speak of specifically as the founder. Uh, I'm not a scientist and I'm not a veterinarian. And I'm not a PhD in animal science and nutrition, but we draw on the resources of all of those people to develop the best possible products. And one of the things that I have always said from the beginning is that when it comes to nutrition and it comes to health for our pets, we are uncompromising. And this is a perfect example, Brooke, what you're saying. It, it, it really, uh, you know, it really brings a smile to my face because I think about this multimodal approach. What it means is we're not compromising. We could, you know, just attack one of these things or you know, even two of these things. That's right. We think of everything that needs to happen to help your pet and help you guys. And, we, we do that because, we yeah, we just, we, we want you to have a solution and one solution. That's wonderful. Okay, so um, uh, just a couple short questions here to wrap up, then I appreciate that summary. I think that helps, again, it, it helps me understand. This is a multimodal approach. We're hitting it on three different levels. Can you talk a little bit about the, the natural? I know these are all natural because everything in our product line um, is natural. We don't, uh, but can you talk to that? Because I know there's a lot of, products in the market that aren't natural and why is natural important to us? And can you just speak to that for a moment? Well, natural is, is key. You know, in, in today's day and age, pet parents want things that they understand. They can read the ingredients and, and they, they understand what it is that they're feeding their pets. Right. Yeah. So they are, they are natural. These are also grain free uh, for many of the reasons that I, that I stated, you know, before about carbs and things like that. Um, they contain no corn, no wheat, no soy, no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. We don't have any fillers in these dental sticks. Um, they were also developed by veterinarians and animal nutritionists. So there was a lot of it, these, a lot of thought uh, going into the development of this product. And these are 100% made in the USA. And I will also add one more thing um, that I, I forgot to mention earlier. I just realized the best time to give these, okay? Ideally, you could give, you know, one after every meal if you wanted to, but the best time, you know, so the best time is after a meal. And if you're going to just do potentially one a day, it would be after your evening meal, after any treats or anything that you would give before bedtime, because then it has time to work all night long. Without, yeah. And without having extra food. Excellent. As long as they're not getting up in the night, having a midnight snack. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like I do, you know, get up, have a little midnight snack, share one with the dogs. Okay. So um, lastly, because we have talked about this being certainly dental health is both a, a dog and a cat issue, but um, we've talked on these dental sticks really about dogs. Do these dental sticks work for cats as well? Um, actually, no, uh, they work extremely well for dogs, but they are only for dogs and uh, not for our feline friends. And the reason for that primarily is the um, iodine content in it. Um, it. Fine for dogs, but not fine for cats. So that's that's why you just want to give these to your dogs. Okay. 
and maybe one day we'll have a, a product for the feline friends out there. But I think it is important. It's it's something also that I, I think we really at Pottery try to do whenever possible. If we can develop a, a supplement, a nutritional supplement that works for both dogs and cats, we do that if we don't compromise on the efficacy of, of how it will you know, deliver results. And this is a perfect example where in order to, um, to make it you know, absolutely the best possible result for the dogs, um, it needed to be formulated in a way that it was not available for cats and vice versa. Sometimes we have products that are in order to really deliver the right results for cats, it can't be also formulated for dogs. And so every now and then in our product line, we have something that's specific to dogs or specific to cats. Uh, most of our nutritional supplements and treats are um, appropriate and and formulated for both dogs and cats and can be, you know, uh, makes that easier for a pet parent to have one product and give it to all of their, their uh, pet family. So to speak. No, 100 percent. And this is also, you know, much more noticeable for, you know, with dogs because they're in your face. Right. Cats are, are not necessarily that way. So I think it's, you know, honestly, it's just a bigger issue um, that that dog owners uh, recognize. Yeah. So. Makes sense. Well, there you have it. Do away with doggy breath for good. Lots of good tips from Brooke. Uh, we appreciate it, Brooke. And thanks for all of your time and effort, not only in today's uh, you know, lunch and learn, but honestly, in your passion for helping pets and helping people through their pets by developing amazing products and having an uncompromising approach to nutrition. Um, it goes a long ways. And um, I know on behalf of everybody out there who is watching now or who will watch later, I thank you and thank all of our partners, um, you know, nutritionists, veterinarians, and others, manufacturers who uh, just maintain that uncompromising approach to health and nutrition so that we can deliver the very best possible results to all of our four-legged friends. Yes. So thank you, Brooke, um, and everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon and a fantastic weekend. We'll see you back uh, in two weeks for another Lunch and Learn. Bye, guys. Bye.